bloody hell. Look at you. I'm sick. Do you want to get better? Who are you? No, I'm the beaver, Walter. And I'm here to save your damn life. It's a film that at once has a high concept. It's about a guy with a puppet on his hand, so there is a lot of lightness to it and a lot of wit to it. It's a fable. Uh, and yet there's a real, it's a real raw portrayal of the effects of, of a mental illness on an entire family. The person who handed you this card is under the care of a prescription puppet designed to help create a psychological distance between himself and the negative aspects of his personality. I just knew that he had those two sides to him. He could do the witty thing and he could be charming and he'd, he'd, he'd rise to the challenge of the puppet and he would love the absurdity of it and yet uh, he would really go to this incredibly dark, raw place. Um, and uh, I'm so grateful for that performance. This is a joke, right? No, son, it's a fresh start. Have you completely lost your mind? Well, I know it seems a bit I'm not talking to you, nut job. I'm talking to mom. It takes you years to get him out of here, and you let him come back the next night with a talking hamster? I said I would never act and direct again, and then, you know, Absolutely. like an idiot, start, here I did it again. Wonderful. Um, mostly I just did it because once I brought Mel aboard, I, I, I knew, I kept trying to say, who am I going to get to play his wife? And I wanted somebody who could really anchor it in the drama and who wouldn't be tempted to kind of uh, fall into a, a funny route, uh, but who the audience would feel comfortable watching the film through her eyes. When I was a little kid, all I ever wanted was to be like you. Then I got older, I just wanted to be anybody else. I know. The characters themselves have to figure out where to look. You know, am I supposed to look at the hand, or am I supposed to look at the guy? And uh, um, you know, there was a, there were always funny moments, but uh, my characters always kind of bring it back to reality. I fought for you, and I will continue to fight for you because I love you. I want daddy. I know, buddy. We had one day left of reshoots with him when uh, sort of his his uh, woeful scandal came out. Um, what, what was going through my mind, I think, was I just wanted to put my arms around him. I think that's really what it was. Uh, it was a, a, a terrible day, and uh, uh, we knew that, uh, and he did as well. He knew that his life would be changed forever. Cut. That's great. He delivered, it was the last scene of the film, the most important and most touching scene of the movie. Uh, he came in with no makeup on and uh, sat in the chair, did two takes that were extraordinary. I printed both of them and used both of them. and. Um, he very nicely did, you know, 30 takes for Anton's side. <laughs> and then, um, you know, I gave him a big kiss and put him on the plane. Mr. Beaver Woodchopper kids selling out in droves. I've been very patient, but I want you, not him. This man is a dead end. He's gone. I do think that no matter who sees the movie, no matter how they feel about the film, they always leave the theater and say, what a magnificent performance. It's something that I hadn't expected. And I thought I was going to bring all this baggage in, and in fact, um, I think that there's a, a, a wonderful feeling of, of, of sympathy and empathy with the character. Where do we start? We start with a good part.